It was a long time ago, and I never saw much of my dad. You probably, some of you have heard the story before, but I didn't see a lot of my dad. And when I did see him, it was in little fits and starts, if you know what I mean. I'd see him for a few weeks, and then I wouldn't see him for six months, and then I'd see him for a couple of months, and I wouldn't see him for a year. And that went on all my life, really. I was about hitting 16, and uh, my dad was in the garage, and he was getting on. He was in the army. He was getting on all his uh, military gear. So I thought, what's going on today when I'm here now? He's putting all his camo gear on, and he's got this big backpack. He says, pass me that backpack. So I picked it up, and I couldn't lift it up off the floor. I said, what's this for? He said, we're going to go for a walk today. I went, not so much of a walk. He said, we're going to go for a run. So he picks this bag up, puts it in the back of the car. He's got another uniform for me that fits me. How we found it, I don't know, because I was like a, like a bean pole then. And he still found like a, an army outfit for me. And he got a smaller bag that wasn't quite as heavy. And we were going to go, and he said, we're going to go and we're going to climb the bulk. Now, anybody here know the bulk mountain? Yeah, they sell ice cream on top and a sheep try, tries to get in your car. Well, this was the other side of the bulk where there was like a cliff and you had to walk up along the side of the cliff and it was really, really steep. And I've never seen, do you know when you, you're with your parents and they face changes because they're getting serious about something? Well, because I didn't know my dad that well, I'd never seen his face change the way that I saw it that day. We were looking up at this mountain and the sky was black. This was the middle of winter. It was freezing cold where we were already and the sky just went black. And all the rocks on the mountain looked just as, just as hard as the sky did. And it was as if the sky was, was just gonna fall. So we started our walk, and uh, I, I looked at my father's face, and it, he had a look on his face as if he wasn't gonna climb this mountain, he was gonna fight it. So I walked with him, and then he started running. So I did my best to keep up with him, and we got, just got to the top of the mountain and he turned to me and he said, keep me in view, don't take your eyes off me. As we got to the top of the mountain, the sky fell. It started hammering down with snow. Now, if you've been up on the bulk, you know how, tall, how high that is. So you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. So I could see him in front of me, but he was like a ghost that was getting lost in the snow. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. And I felt alone. And then all of a sudden, I realized I was alone. I was alone in the middle of a snowstorm on top of a mountain. And not far from me, I knew there was a cliff. So I kept on going as hard as I could. I tried to run, but the snow was getting deeper, quicker and quicker, from my ankles to go to my knees. And then I started again. And the only thing I could do was to shout for my dad. And I shouted on top of my lungs, Dad! But my voice just got lost in the storm. It just kind of got carried away by the wind. So loud the wind was that I couldn't do my voice myself. So I shouted out again, and it just got snatched away. I just, I, I couldn't believe that, whenever mind how much I tried, no, there was nobody there to save me at that point. And in the middle of the storm, I could hear this noise. Getting louder and louder. And it was my dad. He came out from the middle of the storm. He picked me up under his arm with his bag and my bag. And he carried me across the side of the mountain and down into safety. Now, at that point, when I was up there in the middle of the snowstorm, I started to feel really hot. Now, I didn't realize that when you're in, the, in a cold situation, you start to feel hot. It means that your body's starting to shut down, starting to go through hypothermia. I, I was taking my jacket off when he caught me. And he took me down into the, into the forest that was a lot lower uh, where we were, where the car was. And he got me to strip off to my underpants. Freezing cold with snow falling around. And then he wrapped me in the dog's blanket and put the heaters on for bars for me to warm up. What has this got to do with God? What has this got to do with anything like that? Well, it's, it's like being in a situation. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel totally overwhelmed? Because that day I was. I have never been, I can't say since I've really been in a situation as 
overwhelmed as that. At one of the Psalms, my favorite Psalm, Psalm 61 says, hear my cry, O Lord, attend to my prayer. When my heart is overwhelmed, you take me to a rock that is higher than I. When I was going through that time of being overwhelmed, I was shouting out to the only person I knew who could save me at that time. And although I didn't know my father that well, I wasn't shouting out like, Father, where are you? Dad, do you know what I mean? It's a serious stuff. I was screaming, Dad, Daddy, Dad, Dad, where are you? The Bible says that um, people who really pray, pray like that. People who really pray, pray sometimes in desperation. When they know that they feel there's nobody else there to listen, and there's nobody else there to hear them, they shout out with everything in their heart. If I was to ask you, how do you know, how, how, do, you, how do you associate God with Father, then there's one way you can easily remember that. We all know the most famous prayer in the world. Do we? How does it start? Our Father. Our Father. You see, God wants us to understand that's where he is and that's what he wants to be to us as a father. And that's a loving father. One that comes and snatches us away in the midst of a storm and carries us when we can't carry ourselves. One that takes us when we're overwhelmed, that takes us to a place that's safer than we can find in ourselves. But to come to that position, we've got to come to a place where we feel desperate. You see, God doesn't want us to come religiously and say, Oh God, here I am. Can you listen to me one moment? He wants us to pray. Dad! Dad, can you help me out to you? Because that's the sort of God that he is. He's a God that, that loves us. He loves us. And he's a God that cares for us. And he cares for the situations that we find ourselves in. And that's why he asks us to come not in a religious or pious way, but he asks us to come as we are so that he can bring us closer to him and make us like he is. Do you know what I mean? Let's pray. I'm just going to pray a prayer this evening. And it's a prayer that we pray when we ask Jesus into our life. It's a prayer that we pray to become Christians. And if you want to become a Christian, you just pray this along with me. So it's, Lord Jesus, you know that I need your help. You know that I can't do this myself. And I confess that I do things wrong all the time. I confess I'm a sinner. God, will you forgive me? Will you take me to a place of safety? Will you take me to a place where I'm not trying to run myself, but you are carrying me, and I can learn to follow you. Jesus, I really want to be a Christian. Can you help me with this? In Jesus' name, amen.